Last night we camped about a mile down the road inside the National Park at the parking lot for the Information Center. We have learned that, that is the only place in the park you can camp. But we got a really early start. We've driven down to our next spot in this park. This is the Conguillo National Park. And yesterday, or in our last video, we took you to three small hikes and they were fascinating. But today, it's a much bigger hike with much bigger, much cooler trees. Now the locals call these monkey trees. And we're gonna try to get you up close to them and to see some more cool stuff. I'm not the monkey. <laughs> Kurt is not climbing these trees. We'll show you why as we get closer to some of them. All right, today on the agenda is the Sierra Nevada hike. Now we hear it's a four or five hour hike. So Kurt will get you to the end, we think. We'll see how far I feel comfortable going but I could not turn down walking through these trees. So we're right here. And then, so we're gonna walk down by the lake, Lake Lago Conguillo, and then come up the trail. There's a mirror door. That's really kind of Snow's goal point. And then I'm gonna try to get all the way up there uh, to another mirror door. We'll see how that goes. It's supposed to be a two and a half hour one way trip. And uh, there's supposed to be some really steep spots, so I think that could ultimately determine Snow's destiny. <laughs> yes. We are officially on the trail. You can still see the van in the backdrop, but look at the clouds over those beautiful mountains. It was 31 degrees when we woke up this morning. Maybe 38, 39 right now. It is brisk. And yeah, there was definitely ice on the van. Snow had to crank the van in the middle of the night, and warm it up, but we made it through and we're out here bright and early. First ones as usual. <laughs> Let's go. When we were down in Ushuaia, we saw lots of this moss on the trees at the beaver campsite. And when we went on the penguin tour down there on the boat where we walked on the island, the little tour guide there told us this is called the old man beard moss. And that when you see that, it means the air quality is really, really good. Which I can see how that could happen here with all these trees. Here we go. Climb number one. This is pretty steep, isn't it, Snow? Probably not going to be too many of these for snow today. Ben did a lot of hiking yesterday. You remind me of so many things. You remind me of flowers, golden hours, color rain. You remind me of light shining through, twirling, dancing across. It's been steady climbing since we started back there at that first hill. And it's fairly steep. So I think me and Kurt together have made the wise decision that- It's not advisable to continue. No, Kurt's gonna continue. We're not so far away from the van that I can, I can get back super easy and it's all downhill. But this trail, is not for me <laughs> but don't worry there's a little trail as we leave here 
that I'll make Kurt stop at so I can see more of those really cool monkey trees. But this is where I step out. Kurt's gonna get you to the top. <laughs> All right, guys, I tried. There's supposed to be some really beautiful stuff up that trail, but I'll see it just like you did because I know my limits. If you're new to our channel, I have heart trouble. I have heart problems. My heart is bad. Elevation is really hard for me. I can do a little bit, but not a lot. I'm headed back to the van. Kurt's gonna go get those shots of all the beautiful stuff. We'll see you in a little bit. Guys, it's 8.45. We were probably on the trail for about 30 to 45 minutes before Snow uh, smartly decided to, to give it up. But anyway, that's gonna leave me probably with a couple hours to get to the top. We'll see, we'll hustle along. But really looking forward to exploring a new forest. It looks like we have five, these are nice trail markers. It looks like I have uh, 5.4 meters to go. We went 400 meters. We're at station two of 15. So long way left to go guys. Sort of a rock wall here and a bit of a cave. And you can just see the water dripping down through there. I always say those spots are nature's air conditioning on a day like today. That's the last thing we need. <laughs> but this trail is definitely moving up and it's moving up quick. Now, rumor has it at some point in time, we get up where it levels off and goes for a while. That'd be nice for making things quick, but we'll see. We made it to Mirador Congillo, and so that is Lago Congillo. You can see right there. Here we go, 1.7 kilometers to Las Condoras and 5.3 to Sierra Nevada. God, this trail is kind of wrapping around this mountain. We're still working our way up a little bit. But to the left is Lago Congillo, and straight ahead is Sierra Nevada. We should be getting close to the next mirror door. And the trees just keep getting bigger. Number two, let's see if we can get this bird over here. It is 9.50, so we just spent probably about 20 minutes at this little mirror door, really pretty spot. Spent some time here to enjoy it. 3.6 kilometers left up to the Sierra Nevada. Now the reviews say once you get up to this point, most of the climbing's done. However, it also said the trail flattens out long ago and well, that didn't happen. So anyway, we'll find out because we're headed that way and we're getting up in these monkey trees and these are some younger ones. And as I said earlier, they don't really lose their, their little thorns, their little leaves you can see here until they get a bit bigger. So this one's younger. 
I gotta duck down to go underneath of it. But you can see, look at those things. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? And they get little pine nuts on them. And we've seen them in the stores. I'll show you one. But this is what it looks like when they're peeled. So it's actually a pretty big nut. And I didn't taste it because I don't know. I know I'm pretty sure they're edible, but I don't know if you need to roast them or what. So, uh, but yeah, a monkey tree. Now this is not an official Mirador, but it should be. We've kind of crossed over the ridge we were climbing up all morning and we're on the other side so we can't see the lake from here but we can kind of see a valley and another mountain ridge over there and from afar you can see the monkey trees just sticking up and you can see their big trunks this is the first time i can see it so i am up on top of the ridge here and through the trees i can kind of see the little lago Kangio over there and then to my right I can see the other valley and the other ridge. Now, admittedly, the other ridge looks higher, but <laughs> just like that one keeps going up, so does this one. I'm coming up to a point on this ridge and not sure if you can see it, but up in front of us, there's glaciers on those mountains. Well, unfortunately, the sun's not working in our favor today, guys. But right over there, of course, where you have glaciers, you have glacier melts and waterfalls. And this canyon between the ridge I'm on and the one over there is likely cut by a giant glacier over time. And the water's still melting down. It makes a beautiful waterfall down there and down the stream and the river down into the bottom of the valley. This is their idea of making the last little bit tough. Not only is it some of the steepest bits, but you also get to climb over and duck under. Oh boy. That branch caught my backpack. Climb over and duck under all these trees. And it's really not even the roots. It's the trees that are just laying down across the trail up here. And there's a strong mist blowing off the walls of an emerald mountain side I can hear the canyons calling the soft roar of water falling The words I know cannot convey the gravity of this peaceful place The words I know cannot begin to capture standing on this continent on this continent I'm up on the roof of the world I'm up on the roof of the world the clouds are shaking here exchanging compliments up on the roof the world up on the roof of the world I've never felt so small looking out across it all the end of the trail Mirador Sierra Nevada We made it. Wearing my Medellin hat today. And Colombia was definitely a special place for us for a lot of different reasons, but uh, it's where Snow got her knee replaced. And uh, we would have never known 
the knee replacement was key to her survival, but after she had her heart attack in Buenos Aires, she needed to walk to recover, to, uh, to make her heart strong again. She needed to walk, and had she not had her knee replacement before, she could have never taken all those steps around Buenos Aires and all the steps right here in Chile. And uh, today she did the smart thing and saw that the trail was too steep and said, you know what, I'll hike another day. But uh, she's been pushing it and getting stronger and getting stronger. So I'm super proud of her for that. That's where I'm at, wearing my Medellin hat today. All right, you're not gonna believe this, but it just started to snow. It's snowing. And uh, I don't know if I can pick it up on the camera, but <laughs> it's not rain, it's snow, it's snowing. It's real small flakes. <laughs> Told you it was cold up here, guys. And it looks like there's a whole bunch of snow out in front of me. I may need to hurry up, guys. I don't know, but that looks... I was going to say it's the clouds, but I don't think it is. That's snow. Wow. So I'm right here at the end of the trail. A couple hundred meters. Actually right about where I left snow. And there's a couple of woodpeckers out there. Kurt made it back to the van. Uh, apparently it took him two hours to get down. But it's still a little chilly. It never seems to have gotten above like 40 degrees down here. A few little rain clouds coming in. Kurt just told me that it actually snowed. And I think we might be parked in the best place to take a look at these cool trees. Over the past month, we've had a few Chilean locals tell us about these trees and they all called them the monkey tree it's also called the monkey puzzle tree because someone once said it sure would be hard for a monkey to climb this tree it's covered with all kinds of spiny needles now when this tree is younger the spiky needle covered branches are much lower to the ground and the trunk can even be covered in spikes as the tree grows the limbs stay closer to the top of the tree and the trunk becomes more exposed and chunky bark covered, which also kind of looks like a cool puzzle. The monkey tree, scientifically named the Araucaria aracana, which I am sure I am saying wrong, is listed as an endangered species. It was nearly logged out of existence, but Chile took measures to try to protect the tree. In 1976, it was declared a Chilean national monument which should have stopped the logging, but the illegal logging continued. So in 1990, Chile officially banned the tree from logging, which gave them more tools to punish people who illegally harvested the tree. It became more of an actual crime. Now the monkey tree can grow to be over 150 feet tall, which is over 50 meters, with a diameter of eight feet or two and a half meters. It can live to be over 700 years old. The trees have cones that drop with seeds, which are edible and sold in stores. But each tree is either a male or a female, which means a seed from a male cone needs to fall and find a seed from a female cone that fell in the same place before it can even start to grow. With a thinning population, unfortunately, this is a rare occurrence. So between 2003 and 2007, conservation groups teamed up with local universities to teach local landowners the importance of saving the tree and how to grow seedlings and spread them around their land. Six large landowners joined in the project and have been helping the monkey tree make a comeback in Chile. Let's hope that the movement to save this amazing tree continues down through the generations. So Kurt has finished up his hike. I've told you all about these cool monkey trees. It is time to leave Conguillo National Park. 
and we're headed out a different entrance than the one we came in. It's like a drive-through park. So we're headed out the north entrance, and we were not prepared for this beautiful, insanely cool forest road that we're going to drive on. Although it is the kind of road where you really hope no other cars come. A bit bumpy, a bit narrow, but the trees that lean over this road are just amazing to see. And we've been driving through it for like a mile. But we are almost out of this park, and then we have to decide if we're gonna keep driving towards the coast, or are we going to find a campground? But first, let's get off this crazy, beautiful road. And we are on this really crazy road. Look at this. So we can see where the water is washed away. wheels coming off. Snow is white knuckling it and the reason is is because we are in a really wobbly place. This is what happens on a lot of the downhill areas. The water just comes through here and chops these roads up and we are rocking and rolling. through the forest and it looks like we have another treat and we need a little resting treat after <laughs> the road we just drove through oh my they say bumpy roads take you to all the best spots this time it's taking us away there's a little duck oh there's some ducks oh there's some ducks out there uh-oh big camera <laughs> So we have found ourselves chasing the sun. The days are getting shorter down here pretty quick and it's getting colder. We need to get north. We're a couple miles from a camp spot. Hope it's open. Kinda Google indicates that it might be closed. All right, this looks like a cool place. Restaurant, reception, cement pond big slides closed gate chairs up on the tables it is serrado and looks like it has been for a while this is one of the hazards of traveling in the off season which we are it looks like unfortunately we're going to be heading on and most likely looking for a wild spot which means no shower no shower boogers we're rolling into town and it looks like we're going to be doing a little freestyling. Typical snow and Kurt, we're off the usual overlanding trail, kind of doing some back roads, some lesser traveled spots. 
even where I overlander really isn't. <laughs> Here we go, freestyling. Well, we drove about an hour longer than we planned on, but we have made it to what we are going to call home for the night. It is a little city park in the median of a little residential street. We're level enough. It looks safe. The sun is about to go down. We didn't get here any too soon. The only bad news is we can't open up the door for the kitties. If we have a smooth night though, we'll pull the kitties out for a little walk in the morning. But y'all cross your fingers we don't get knocked on in the middle of the night and get told we can't park here because we're tired and it's time to call it a day. And it's time to call it the end of the video. So with that, we will see you guys in a few days from somewhere else here in Chile. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.